Uh, well, good morning. Thanks for having us here. Um, so Cloud Foundry has always been about the developer. You know, developers want a platform that lets them focus on their work, you know, focus on the problems that they're trying to solve. And through innovations like CF Push and service brokers, the kind of detailed work of running an application and connecting it to the rest of the world is handled for you. But time has also taught us that applications rarely exist alone. They're part of a larger system, uh, and they need to work together with other components and other technologies. Um, and the application develop, uh, developers build have to be operated and secured as part of that larger system. That's why we find projects like Irene so exciting. Uh, Irene allows us to take the high productivity developer experience of Cloud Foundry and deeply integrate it with Kubernetes, allowing the creation of a single environment where the right tools can be used by the developer. Now, yesterday you saw Irene itself in action. Jules did a, a demo of, of the Irene project itself. Today we'd like to show you how we've implemented Irene in IBM Cloud uh, and how real developers can get value from it. So it's pretty incredible what developers can create when you give them some time and the right tools. So recently, we challenged our development teams to use IBM Cloud to solve pressing global problems. And our team in the UK stepped up to that challenge and created an app to help with disaster relief. Now, this is an issue that especially hits home to me. I live in North Carolina, and this is an actual screenshot from my phone. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to be in the eye of the storm. Now look, if you live on the coast, a category one hurricane is no big deal. To me, it was a terrifying experience. The sound of the wind was deafening, the rain hit the window sideways, and simple things like pine cones became dangerous projectiles. In the aftermath of a hurricane, there's flooding, there's down power lines, and when you lose power, there's just no way of knowing when it will return. And that makes communication a real challenge. So our team built an app on the IBM Cloud in their spare time over the course of six days to make the aftermath of a hurricane just a little bit easier. So let's take a look at what they built. When a natural disaster strikes, communication with first responders is essential and can mean life or death. But a disaster can take down the network. Recupero is a mobile app that enables continued communication via peer-to-peer -peer technology until someone finds a working network connection. So during a crisis, you can notify loved ones that you're safe with the simple tap of a button. Or if you're not okay, the app will forward your location to responders. They can find you in the map view and make sure that help is on the way. As you saw, the team built an app to communicate in a disaster, letting family, friends, and coworkers know if they need help or to reassure that they're okay. And it's important in a disaster situation to plan for unpredictable demand and infrastructure damage. So the team built a solution that can handle scale and internet outages. So now let's take a look at how the app was built. So here you see the architecture of the application. It's pretty straightforward. It starts with a mobile application. The mobile application allows users to record whether they're okay or whether they need help. The mobile application talks to other users over a peer-to-peer -peer network. That peer-to-peer -peer network allows the application to pass information from user to user in the event that they can't get access to the internet, which is something that would, might happen in a disaster. Eventually, somebody will be able to connect to the network, collect all of the information from all the users, and upload it to the cloud. The back end of that mobile application was built on Cloud Foundry, uh, in our case, using our Cloud Foundry enterprise environment on IBM Cloud. We want to share sensitive information about users' location and health status, and so the isolated offering of Cloud Foundry was a great fit in this use case. The Cloud Foundry application takes the mobile data, formats it, and sends it to a pair of microservices that are running on a scalable Kubernetes cluster. The Kubernetes microservices have two primary jobs. First, to serve up an interface for the rescue workers, the map view that you saw in the video, uh, that allows the rescue workers to understand whether you're okay uh, or whether you need help and where you are. The second function of the microservices on Kubernetes was to store and retrieve the data from a blockchain. 
These are the major components of the application that allowed the team to come together and solve this problem. Now, when this app was first built, um, Irene didn't exist yet. And so we ended up with an architecture that had two separate runtime environments, a Cloud Foundry cluster for running the mobile backend and a Kubernetes cluster for running the microservices for interacting with blockchain. But now, thanks to Irene, we could architect this application differently. We could have a much more efficient environment where all of the microservices run together in a single environment that has the Cloud Foundry interface and a Kubernetes backend. Why does this matter? It matters because it greatly simplifies the operation of the application. There's only one environment to manage, one environment to secure and monitor, one environment to maintain instead of two. It also allows the application components to communicate with each other more easily and in a more secure fashion within that single cluster environment. So let's take a look at this unified environment. Okay, so here we are on the IBM Cloud, and we are going to spin up a Cloud Foundry enterprise environment. Here's the overview page. And as you can see, we now have a technical preview of Irene. I'm gonna click on that. And I'm gonna name my cluster CF Summit. And this is just a technical preview, so we only have it um, available in a couple of locations. Uh, when we GA, we'll have it worldwide, but I'm gonna pick Dallas 10 as my location. And here you can also choose the size. There, this is gonna be two cells with four cores. And I'm going to create this cluster. Now, I'm an impatient person, so we've actually already created this environment. So I'm gonna go here. All right, so if you're a Cloud Foundry admin, this is where you would go to look at the status of your clusters. And here you can check the health. And it looks like we are all clean and there are no issues. All right. Now, as a developer, you may want to use your Stratus console to look at the health of the back end, the mobile back end. All right, let's see. This is a native Stratus environment. Let's check here. All right, now I can see all my stats of the mobile back end of the application. So here we have an environment. You saw, we saw how to quickly create a Cloud Foundry environment leveraging Irene running on a Kubernetes cluster. Maybe we can look at the back end of this and look at it in more detail. So here we are at the command line, and for all of us here in the room who are familiar with Cloud Foundry, of course, I can simply look at my applications from a Cloud Foundry perspective. So if I do CF apps, I can see the mobile backend application that was running through Cloud Foundry that you saw in the architecture. But now that this is running on Irene, I can also look at this from the perspective of Kubernetes. So I can, for example, um, uh, get list pods from Kubernetes and see the same container that you see through Cloud Foundry also through Kubernetes. Um, I can also see that the microservices for interacting with the blockchain and serving up the mobile interface are available to me. So I can, for example, uh, look at a different namespace and see here's the two pods that make up those services. So all three containers that make up the core architecture of this application are available in this same Kubernetes environment. Why does that matter? It means that I can use common tools to interact with them. I can leverage the technologies that are emerging in other communities like the Kubernetes community. I can use monitoring tools and logging tools um, consistently across Cloud Foundry applications and Kubernetes applications. And I can secure and manage this environment a single time. So in a disaster, we might have to plan for unpredictable demand, and we might have to scale up the app. How would we do that? Yeah, so both Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes, of course, are really good at doing uh, auto-scaling of workloads. Um, so maybe we can just do that through Cloud Foundry and, and kind of watch it happen through Kubernetes. So I'm gonna go down here, and I'm just gonna ask Kubernetes to watch this namespace. So it'll print out a line anytime there's a change in status of any pods running in that namespace. And I can 
um, come into Cloud Foundry through the Cloud Foundry command line and scale the mobile back end of the application. I'll go from one to three, uh, just to keep it simple. And you can see Cloud Foundry has initiated that scaling activity, and behind the scenes, you can see that the Irene is interacting with Kubernetes to launch those additional containers, and from a Kubernetes perspective, you can see the same things that are happening. So here I have the ability to kind of mix and match these two environments together and leverage the best of both. Great. So basing our Cloud Foundry offering on Kubernetes through projects like Irene that we're all working on together, I think is a great step towards our vision of a unified platform for containers and container-based development. Um, as new technologies emerge, like Istio and Knative, um, we can work to evolve and mature them and fit them into that platform. I think we're working on a world where all styles of container-based development, direct consumption of containers with Kubernetes, uh, high productivity development with Cloud Foundry for things like 12-factor applications, and serverless programming, um, function-based systems can all act together within the context of this single platform. And so we're really excited about this evolution. I think it allows developers who love the Cloud Foundry experience to be able to leverage the latest and greatest of other technologies that are happening in the broader container space and be able to build some really amazing life-saving applications. We are so proud to offer a technical preview of Irene. Check it out on the IBM Cloud. We can't wait to see what you will build. Thank you so much. Thank you.